So this is, this is the Marble Lab. The purpose of this lab is for you guys to predict where the marble is going to land. It's going to land when it rolls off this table, off this ramp, across the table, and then off onto the floor. Because of projectile motion, because it's going to take some time to hit the floor, right? It's going to travel some distance here. And I want you guys, ultimately, to predict exactly where that's going to be, right? And then put a cup there. Yeah? Did it work? They did with bullets, with bullets, okay, yeah. Let's see, this is a different one. They, I tried to do it with bullets too, but you know, you wouldn't believe all the red tape, you know. They, I even said like Kevlar vests and stuff like that. But yeah, it's like, it's, I, it's, I swear, there's some people that just live to like just rain on your sunny day, you know. Okay, so ultimately, shh, guys, it's exciting, but we're wasting time. So ultimately, you're going to predict where it's going to go, and you're going to put a cup there, or if, it's, if it varies a lot like this way, you could put like a meter stick or something this way, but basically you just want to test your prediction, see if it actually goes as far as you think it's going to go, okay? So how you do that is, the, and there's two steps, right? Step one is you've got to find the velocity, right? And you're going to find the velocity because when you do your setup, you're going to have a little ramp, and the ramp is going to be exactly make it exactly a meter from the edge of the table what kids will do is they'll make it like so close to the edge of the table that you really can't time it and they make the marble go so fast that they're like oh, i can't even see it right okay so let me just show you the perfect setup here is i've measured a meter i actually took a little pencil i'm going to erase this mark when i'm done but i put a little pencil mark there so i know that it's actually going to go a meter and then i'm putting the end of my my ruler and it turns out these rulers are perfect little um and then this might be a tall, too tall of a ramp, so maybe I'll use a micron box. You could use a notebook, a textbook, something like that. And then just look at it. You should be able to... I think we can time that, don't you think? Yeah. That's not too fast. Don't make this side too high. If it's too high, it's going to go too fast. Make this distance... I'd make it exactly a meter, then your calculations are really easy, right? Might be better to have more distance than that, but a meter is enough, right? Okay, you're also going to need a stopwatch, aren't you? And the first part of this is just simply this. Okay, turn the stopwatch on, and I'm doing this all by myself. But you want to always drop this. Stop. <laughs> you need like a drum kit or something. Right? Um, set this thing on the same exact spot on the, the the ruler, right? Obviously, you want to do something that's very predictable. So I'm always going to release it from the little half mark between the 11 and the 12. I'm always going to release it by just lifting my fingers straight up, like that, so I'm not pushing it up or down, right, like that. And then I'm going to time it, and what you want to time, don't time it when it's on the ramp, time it only for this one meter. Does that make sense? Because when it's on the ramp, it's speeding up and it's all very complex, right? But when it's here, this should be simple, it should move at a more or less constant velocity, right? And if we go one meter divided by whatever time we've got, we're going to get the, the velocity, the, the sideways velocity, and that's what we want, okay? So that looks like this, I'm going to be like, and you're going to do this, and what I would do if you have two people doing this, is go on your mark, get set, go, right, start it, whoops. Actually, you don't want to do that, I'm sorry. You want to do, you want them to release it, and you want the person who's timing it to start the timer, I'm sorry, right when it gets to the bottom. Can you guys, can I interrupt? Can we not chat? I had, I had kids um, complain to me. Okay, they say, I can't pay attention because the people around me are talking. So right now, the rest of the period, you will be able to chat. Whatever it is you were talking about, we can talk about, right? Okay, but, but right now, don't talk. Yeah, this is hard enough to learn as it is, right? So what you want to do is get ready and then go boom, boom, like that. And write that down. Do many trials of this, right? Okay, boom, boom. And it's cheating to let it fall off because then, of course, you know where it's going to land, right? Whoops. I didn't start it. i got to start it there to there, yeah? From there to there. Do a bunch. Do at least five trials, maybe ten trials. I mean, it's easy, right? Write them all down. So just make sure you're starting it here, stopping it there, right? So your data table for this part is... is uh, Table distance, 
right? And for me, it's going to be 1.00 meters, right? I measured all the way down to centimeters, right? It's probably even down to the millimeters, but I don't want to go there, right? Okay, my distance is 1.0 meters and then times, right? And then you might want to go boop, 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 betty boop, betty boop, and then do average. And then of course, if this is a, should be a constant velocity, so how do we figure out the velocity? What's the velocity going to be? Is it just distance divided by time? Yeah, there we go, right? Okay, so our velocity is going to be x divided by t. So this is part one, okay? And there are two parts, okay? There are two parts to this thing. Part one is you've is you got to figure out what that velocity is. It's just right here. You're going to measure from right here, okay? Yeah, go for it. So you're going to measure from here, start the stopwatch there, okay? Stop it right here, and then catch it, right? Whatever this time is, okay, that's what you're going to put in here. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Okay, now the second part, the second part we're going to, you know, sort of IQ on the line, right? Okay, the second part is we've got to predict where this thing's going to land. And so the second part is just like this, horizontal, vertical, and what we really want is this X here. This is our goal, is we want to predict that horizontal X, right? I'll just put it right here and then you can pick it up when I'm done talking. All right, so what are we going to need to know? What are we going to need to have? What are we going to need to figure out? What do we have to measure? What do we have to do? What do we know? Alex has got something. Yeah, that's going to go here, isn't it? Yeah, so we're going to have to measure this guy, right? And then uh, what else are we going to know? Got to measure that, right? It looks like this. We're going to go. That'll oopsis, right? Yes, sir. We know gravity. Yeah, we know gravity, right? So this guy's negative 9.8, and this guy's zero, right? And what's our initial vertical velocity? Yeah, assuming these tables are level, that guy's zero, right? What else do we know? What do we do in part one? We calculate something that will be very, very important. Yeah, but we, ah, 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 we, can, we, we measured the time here. Is the time it takes to go from here to here the same time it's going to take to fall off the table? No, I'm totally unrelated, right? Okay. Initial x velocity, there you go. Okay, so then calculate the velocity, right? So what the thing you're going to do in part one here is the velocity, velocity, <laughs> I can't spell velocity, I said velocity. The velocity equals blank, right? Meters per second, right? Okay, so that velocity right there is going to go whoop, right here. They both have the same velocity, yeah? Okay, so whatever that velocity is, you're going to put in there. Okay, so now you're going to know this and this, and you know those three things. Can't you find the time? We don't, by the way, give a hoot about the final velocity here. Kudos to you. Blessings if you calculate it, right? But you're going to calculate this guy. Right? Aren't you? From all this stuff, can't you? Right? And it's, it's like less than a second. In one second, uh, the ball is going to fall 4.9 meters. So this is going to be some number much smaller than a second. Okay? And so that time is going to go across. Yeah? And then can't you find this? It's just going to be this times this. Want to be? Yeah? Yeah? Yeah, I'm excited about it. Are you excited about that? I'm excited about it. Okay. Uh, so two parts. This is part two. Right? So if you've written all this down, I think it's going to be a slam dunk for you. The, the trick I'll tell you, I've already told you, don't make this too high. Make this at least a meter. I would just, I think a meter is good. Just make it exactly a meter. Take a meter stick back there. Right? I would make this about as high as a binder or something like that. Slower is better even, right? You know, because then it takes a long time to cross. That was taking like 1.3 seconds. And that's about, you know, 